Uh, hello everybody, it is uh, Smike here, and today we are counting down the top 10 facts about Toy Bunny from Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Uh, number 10, very interestingly, Barack Obama actually makes a cameo during the bite of 87. Number 9, number 9, number 9. Rhapsody Street Kids is the ugliest goddamn thing ever created. Yo, okay, okay, you just, you just, you just, you just, grandma, Grandma, look, I understand that you are a huge fan of Cameron Boyce. But you need to stop doing that. Your grandson is taught. Oh, look, he's going to go fucking kill himself now. Thanks, Grandma. Anyway, that's what I would have said of a little show called Angela Anaconda Never Existed. Angela Anaconda is one of the worst cartoons of all time. Now, the particular thing that may have caught your attention is the animation. Oh my god, the animation style is something that may remind you of various other things, such as Monty Python, and like they both got stakes in the title, so might as well, or the segments on that really dated Mad Show, or JibJab.com, if you remember that, the Weird Al Lame Claim to Fame music video, or the endless hellhole that is the Flogo Baby videos. <laughs> I wish whoever made this was, uh, fucking dead. But no, that involves, like, photoshopped images on bad Flash animation for the most part. This is, like, 3D stock image hybrid shit. Like, they actually had to take pictures of real verbal movements, and they had to make entirely new software and shit just to make the show. Look at this guy animating it right here. He looks like he wants to fucking kill himself. I wouldn't blame him. Like, part of what makes the art direction so bad is why, why does everything have to be black and white? It doesn't help that everything else is just stock images that obviously weren't designed for the environment. Everything is incredibly painfully compressed. There are constantly frames just flat out missing. The lip syncing is awful. And look, I appreciate them trying to do something unique, and I am the minority opinion that anything can be good as long as the right people are behind it. But despite being the creators of the format, they were not the right people to pull this off. Like, look at the storyboards. They absolutely have zero style resembling the final product. Overly relying on the computer for everything is never a good sign. Hey, sometimes bad animation could be made up with good storytelling. Oh my god, was I wrong. I'm like, most people don't even know that this was a full show on television. If you were a stupid kid that liked Digimon in the two thousands there's this fucking awful Digimon the movie short that played before the movie. Well, not for long. Angela Anaconda Digivolved to Angela Mon. Guys, I'm gonna fucking drink bleachy mon, Jesus Christ. Refills are free, right? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Didn't know at the time that parents' relationship was rocky. I begged to go see Digimon movie. Parents agree, but I don't realize it's for them to spend some time together as well. Get to theater and excited about Digimon flick. Can't even afford popcorn and drinks. Parents look happy. Angela Anaconda short comes on. Parents also don't speak very good English. My little boy mind can't comprehend all the fuck going on. Parents are utterly confused by this Canadian fuck running around in a Digimon suit. I start crying and they pull me out of the theater. Mom and dad start blaming each other for going the wrong film dad throws away the popcorn mom wanted lots of arguing and i'm still crying get out to parking lot and drive off in a rush get into an accident in parking lot dad moves out of mouth later fucking bitch of a whore angela anaconda ruined my life so let's talk about the theme song It has zero flow in a song by a character who cannot sing at all. Okay, your name is Angela, cool, but who are you and why should we watch your show? I'll introduce my friends to you. Okay, introduce your friend. Oh, no, wait, she doesn't. And now to today's story, starring me and not starring Nanette Manoir. Okay, if Nanette Nanoir is not in the show, then why would you introduce her? She's the only character we get any details about, and she's still in the fucking show. It still stars her. She's not the protagonist. She doesn't get as much focus as you, but it still stars her. Alright, let's look at the, the substitute episode. So we start out with, you guess it, all the kids acting like assholes. Anything when you have to have breakfast at my house. Mom, they took all the fruit again and didn't leave me any milk either. Did someone say milk? <laughs> the good one. <laughs> okay, number one. Oh my god, the fucking baby. And uh, number two, what's the point of this? It's If it's not important in the plot or it's not there to tell some type of joke, then we don't need a flashback. What, what's the joke? Is it the joke that the brothers were assholes and they took all the berries and milk from the, the cereal? Did someone say milk? <laughs> the good one. <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. 
Oh, oh, it's like a like a cum semen joke. Okay, that's uh, that's what I do when I watch Norm of the North. I just noticed this while I was editing this, but you notice how there's clearly nothing in in the bottle, but then she immediately does what I can't make women do when there's no milk in the bottle? Like, how, how the fuck did you do that? Anyway, the teacher is sick and she won't be coming in today, but the music in the background made it sound like she fucking died. The teacher will be in shortly. Um, what are we supposed to do with our homework? <laughs> Whatever we want. How immature. <laughs> Good idea, Johnny Abadi. See, Angela, I'm putting gum on it for extra weight, like a stealth bomber. Now, considering that we're watching the Dr. Xenery show, you were probably expecting a September 11th joke. But September 11th, 2001 is a serious event in American history that should not be joked about due to the countless people affected by it. Were you expecting me to say that? No. Neither would you expect anybody to sit through a minute of this shit. <laughs> yeah, yep, kids, that's, uh, that's how gravity works. Excuse me, Miss Clump, but as class monitor, I feel it is my duty to inform you of today's academic agenda. As a oh my god, shut the fuck up. No, I'll do a project about rainforest food from the rainforest. Uh, the rainforest food from the rainforest. Hang on, guys, I'm just writing my uh, report about the New York buildings from New York. I already called dibs on it, Angela Anaconda. Why are you referring to her like that in a normal conversation? Now, a part of the gimmick of the show is that Angela has fantasies like Doug, except she's a fucking sociopath. You could always do cannibals. I'll have the crepe nanette with a side of mashed derrick and some macaroni and cheese. Tempting, but I'll pass. What the fuck? Why would you fantasize about cannibalizing people? No, I understand that Nanette is a complete fucking cunt. Like, I'm being serious, she's an absolute bully and a terrible person. But why would you fantasize about wanting to eat her? By definition, that makes you not normal. What the fuck? Miss Plump? There's plenty of room at the popular kids' table. Fine right here, Missy. Thanks. Oh! Oops. Okay. <laughs> wow, that- this just looks... so fucking bad. Anyway, Nanette goes to the substitute teacher's house. Good morning, Miss Plump. Oh, dude, she's like nine. What the fuck? Oh, and then she goes to another teacher's house. I, I think everyone in this town is just a pedophile. I, I bet uh, Denny the mailman lives here, you guys. Anyway, Angela goes back to school. What is all the fuss about? Angela's treehouse made out of popsicle sticks. Turn around, you dumb bit. Oh, I apologize. That's not in the budget. Never mind. Anyway, Johnny Abadi is a fucking idiot, and he breaks the project. Angela Anaconda, this is your seventh tardy this month. But, Mrs. Brinks? It's only Monday the 5th. Angela, listen to Mrs. Julia Child. How do you know that she's not referring to, like, a month as a specific point in the grading system that wouldn't be a month in actuality? It could be your seventh time being late in, like, a period of 30 school days, despite it in actuality being the 5th of- Anyway, it's time for another sociopathic fantasy. So, Ninawatha of the Dimwits is feeding her beloved Miss- Oh, and then Nanette and the teacher fall off a waterfall and, uh, presumably fucking die. And then she floods the storage cabinet and she has to go to the principal's office. But then the substitute is there and she's a substitute principal. And no, I guess they don't have a vice principal when the principal's absent. Despite the fact that teachers and principals are entirely different jobs, regardless of working in the same facility. And then they order a pizza, which probably has fucking chunks of people in it. Uh, okay, you, you thought that was bad. How about we look at the pilots for the show? My name is... Fucking asshole Ian made this, so why does it look like that? Who greenlit this? Johnny, haven't you a valentine for I, your Sherry Amour? Which is French for, it better be nice. Why is Nanette's hair like a wig and Angela's is just scribble? Why is everyone else besides Angela stuck to one facial expression? Why does Nanette always have to be smiling? Cause you are going to eat this card. <laughs> 
Oh my god! Repulsive! I can't believe you're wearing boys' underwear, Angela Anaconda. Nanette, I got a better fucking question. How about you stop staring at her vagina? Or penis, we don't assume genders on this show. And that's Angela Anaconda. Oh my fucking god, what the hell did we just watch? And an interesting thing to, to point out about this show is that it actually has quite a large online fan base. There's this channel, Amazon Kane, which has some top quality Angela Anaconda content. So if you think this is good, then subscribe to her. Guys, I'm gonna stop doing the Dr. X Henry show and just do nothing but praise Angela Anaconda now. Anyway, she's been working really hard to reboot the show, implying that she probably gives more shit about the actual show than the people did while making it. Again? I don't quite believe that kids are allowed to pick where the field trip is, considering all the planning involved, but... Was this a thing? I don't know. Even her, the number one Angela Anaconda fan, knows that the shit is terrible and makes no sense. I used to be offended at horror depictions of the character considering how so much of the internet didn't like the show, and I'm still seeing some of the same jokes. Oh, uh, she's a sociopath. No, she's not. Guys, I got some bad news for you. I did hear back from Wild Brain, and they're not interested in rebooting Angela Anaconda. And they're not interested in giving up the right. You, you, you actually thought that people would be interested in rebooting Angela Anaconda. You know, the show about how Scout Finch fantasizes about fucking cannibalizing people. Anyway, I'm Dr. Xenry and I'm signing off. My name is Angela Hannibal. Welcome to my Marion show. I'll introduce my friends to you. Oh no, it's Minnie Poe.